Meanwhile, Gretch, a new study suggests that folks with a college degree didn't know much more about our nation's history than those without one. Here's a question we showed you a little earlier. Forget about what Howard Wilson said with the answer. What was the source of the following phrase? Quote, government of the people, by the people, for the people. Was it the I Have a Dream speech, Declaration of Independence, Constitution, or the Gettysburg Address? All right. Lieutenant General Cy Bunting joins us from D.C. He's the chair of National Civic Literacy Board. And the answer, Cy, was? Uh, the Gettysburg Address. And it was D. So Howard Wolfson was, gets an it, A today. But unfortunately, <laughs> uh, elected officials, people who've gone to college for four years, they don't fare so well with questions like this, do they? No, they don't. As a matter of fact, uh, the failure rate of the 2,500 people we surveyed uh, was 71% uh, uh, in the United States, which is, uh, which is pretty scary. And elected officials had a failure rate uh, greater than that of, of uh, ordinary citizens. So that's even uh, scarier. Uh, what's scary to me is... Uh, you know, we talk every day about the uh, the branches, the separate branches of the federal government, and yet when given a choice, which could they name, the branches of government or the judges from American Idol, what they get right most often? Uh, Paula Abdul. Crazy. Uh, she comes out way ahead of uh, Abraham Lincoln. Oh, my goodness. All right. <laughs> but what I think is also just really amazing about this study is that the lowest ranked institutions, colleges that we think of at the top of the list, Princeton, yeah. Duke, Yale, Cornell, yeah. people scored the worst at those institutions? Well, it appears that uh, those schools are very famous, they're very prestigious, people want to go there, but not to study the kinds of things that citizens should be studying. Uh, and, and in our view, those things include U.S. history, uh, free market economics, international relations, political philosophy. Right. Most of those things are optional at schools like that, so the kids don't study we're, them. We're showing my alma mater, actually, just by chance, Stanford right there. But why is this important, Cy? Well, it's important if you're going to be a thoughtful and participating citizen uh, to make judgments uh, about, for example, elections, uh, policy. You should know the basic institutions that, that, that govern the country. For example, one of our questions asks, uh, who, who has the power to declare war? And over a third of our citizens think the president can declare war, when, of course, the answer is uh, Congress. Sure. You know, when you think about it, Cy, uh, the average person who goes up through the process of becoming a naturalized citizen, somebody who's born in Honduras or Uruguay or someplace else, winds right. up with a better knowledge of how things work in this country because, they, you know, they've got to take the test and study the, everything before they get uh, the okay to come on in. That's right. And, and these questions uh, are not funny questions. No. They're not kind of gotcha questions. They're, they're basic institutional questions about our country and how it runs. Like this one. Which of the following are the inalienable rights referred to in the Declaration of Independence? A, yeah. B, life, liberty, and property, honor, liberty, and peace. Uh, and so I know what that answer is, but I'm going <laughs> to let you tell us, Cy. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Of I, I hope all Americans know that and believe in it. All right. Uh, your, your website is AmericanCivicLiteracy.org, where viewers can take uh, some more civic tests on their own, right? That's right. All right. I hope they do better than most people. Yeah, no kidding. All right, Cy, thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. It's thank great you to have you. Thank you for joining us. All right. How well do you know our nation's history? Well, the nonprofit Intercollegiate Studies Institute finds most of us would probably flunk a test on American civics. Here are some examples. When asked to name all three branches of government, only half could answer the executive, legislative, and judicial branches. When asked who has the power to declare war in the U.S., almost 40% got it wrong, naming the president. 54% knew that power belongs to Congress. The group tested 2,500 adults, including high school dropouts, elected officials, people with advanced degrees. 1,700 people, or 71%, scored an F. The average score was 49%. Well, you probably know a thing or two about fifth grade math and science, right? But what about the basics of your government? Could you possibly know more than our elected officials? Arlena Cho joins us now with the results of a new report that may surprise you. Yeah. Do we want to know? Well, I don't know. I mean, brace yourselves, guys. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Uh, we should tell you, random sample of 2,500 people across the country, 33 questions in all, many of them taken from basic citizenship exams. And guess what? Those who have held elective office scored an average of five points lower than those who have never held public office. Not good. And overall, 71% of people who took the test failed. 
The survey by the Intercollegiate Studies Institute included questions about political history, guys, foreign relations, and the economy. And at a time when the country is facing such serious economic problems, one of the report's authors told us it's the worst time to be experiencing what he calls an epidemic of civic ignorance. American citizens are not going to be able to exercise informed judgment at the ballot box and then through a public opinion polls tell their elected representatives what to do about this problem. Our anchors are in incredibly surprised by all this, right? We want to take a question, guys. Uh, look at the questions, rather, that people had a hard time with. And not to put you on the spot, but okay. Not we'll, to put we'll, you on the we'll spot. Put you on we the will. spot. We're going to put you on the spot. So uh, let's take a look at one of the questions. Identify the three branches of government. What are they? All right. Uh, there's the main trunk, and then there's like, <laughs> the left branch and the right branch, right? Cor the executive branch, which would be the president. Legislator. And... Yes. Legislative and judicial. That's right. Then the, that's the answer there. The can, we, can we reveal it? There we go. Hey, we brought back the Tooth True Squad <laughs> ring. Executive, <laughs> legislative, and judicial. Whoop. That's whoop. right. <laughs> the next question, uh, we, we should mention fewer than half, 49%, got that question right. We want to take a look at the next question here. What was the source of the phrase, government of the people, by the people, for the people? Was it A, the I have a dream speech, B, the laughing? Declaration of Independence, C, the U.S. Constitution or D the Gettysburg Address, guys. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with D the Gettysburg Address. That's what, and that is correct. <laughs> D. Did you know that one too? You were looking at okay. the Gettysburg Address. How did the respondents do, guys? Well, not well. 21% of citizens got that question right. Only 23% of elected officials answered that question correctly. And by the way, double that number. 56% of Americans knew that Paula Abdul was a judge <laughs> on American Idol. I know she didn't write the Gettysburg Address. <laughs> she cert most certainly didn't. She did help uh, put it to music. <laughs> you know, most people don't know the Gettysburg Address was very short. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Just an added bit of detail. Uh, okay. John's so smart. All right, last question. What part of the government has the uh, power to declare? War. Is it A, Congress, B, the President, C, the Supreme Court, or D, the Joint Chiefs of Staff? Well, this a lot is, of people this could, is, a, this is funny. This could because, stump a lot of people. Be, be, Absolutely. Well, yeah. Because officially it's Congress. That's but right. But many would argue that uh, during the last eight years there was, that, that was called into question a little bit. That's right. And That's also right. some people might perceive as sending troops into battle as being a declaration of war, war, where it's not necessarily because the President of the War Powers Act does have the That's right. ability to commit troops for 60 days before That's he has right. to go to Congress. So. That's right. The answer... We all know that by now is is a Congress. Uh, Fifty four percent of citizens answer that correctly. Get this, guys! Only forty six percent of elected officials knew that Congress was the right answer. Isn't that incredible? Uh, we should mention. Well, as I too, said, you, you could be fooled because yeah, President, you can be fooled. President Listen, Bush did go to Congress for authorization for the that, war, but he could have done it without it. So. That's right. That's right. But I mean, you know, elected officials. I think should know that, right? You know what I find yeah. interesting is that people who have had to study for to become U.S. citizens, mm -hmm. meaning they weren't just born here like right. my dad, they know this stuff like the back oh, of their hand because I mean, it, it takes on a new meaning. Sure right? they do. Sure they do. Yeah. I mean, my parents the same way. You know, um, one one thing we should mention: we weren't allowed to cheat. Everybody, we should know that. Um, they took also, our laptops away. It, the um, it didn't matter if you went to college or didn't go to college. People scored pretty much the same. Didn't matter if you were conservative or liberal. Pretty much the same. Um, but the most interesting finding of course, I think, is that the survey um, says that um, the average citizen scored better uh, than, and, than uh, elected officials. It's, it's, inc it's really, really incredible. And <coughs> just Jack Cafferty would probably say, just more evidence that when you go to Washington, your brain rots. <laughs> well, <laughs> and, you know, I think one other important thing, especially coming out of the election, guys, is that when you know about your country's history, you are more likely to vote and participate, yeah, you know, so. Alina, yeah. thanks for that. Fascinating stuff.